Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss OSA zone test with demonstration and discussion of Viva questions. So please watch this video till the end. To download lecture notes and other interesting stuff related to biochemistry, please visit website biochemistrybasics.com. OSA zone formation. All reducing sugars will form OSA zones with excess of phenylhydrazine when kept at boiling temperature. Sucrose will not form OSA zone because sucrose is a non-reducing sugar. And these OSA zones are insoluble and each sugar will have a characteristic crystal form of OSA zones. That's why OSA zone test is useful for the identification of sugars. Now we will discuss principle of OSA zone test. Ozazone formation results in the formation of characteristic crystalline derivatives of monosaccharides or disaccharides. In this reaction, phenylhydrazine will react with the carbonyl carbon that is aldehyde or ketone group and the next adjacent carbon of monosaccharides or reducing disaccharides. So phenylhydrazine after reacting with monosaccharides or reducing disaccharides there is a formation of phenylhydrazone first with the elimination of water molecule. And this phenylhydrazone after reacting with two molecules of phenylhydrazine will lead to the formation of osazone. And over here there is an elimination of ammonia and aniline. If there is a presence of glucose in the solution then it leads to the formation of glucose osazone. If there is a presence of maltose, lactose and fructose in the solution then it will lead to the formation of maltose osazone, lactose osazone and fructose osazone respectively. So that is the principle of osazone test. And in the whole reaction there is a utilization of three molecules of phenylhydrazine. Now we will see procedure of osazone test. So in the procedure of osazone test, first take 5 ml of carbohydrate solution in the test tube and then add 3 ml of osazone buffer in the test tube. Osazone buffer contains phenylhydrazine hydrochloride, sodium acetate and glacial acetic acid. After that, cover the top of the test tube with the help of cotton wool and keep the test tube in preheated water bath for 20 to 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, cool the test tube under the running tap water and prepare the slide from the crystals and examine under microscope. So that is the procedure of osazone test. Now we will see characteristic crystals of various sugars. Osa zones have a characteristic crystal structures, melting point and precipitation time. That's why they are useful in the identification of sugars. This is the picture showing the structure of glucose, mannose and fructose. As you can see, the, the difference in the structure of glucose, mannose and fructose is related to the first two carbon only. So this difference will be masked by phenylhydrazine. That's why glucose, fructose and mannose will form a same type of osazone that is needle shaped or broom shaped crystal. While galactose is differ in the structure of glucose with respect to the fourth carbon. So the galactose will form broad flat thron shaped crystals. And lactose will form a touch me not plant or powder puff shaped crystals and maltose will form a sunflower shaped crystal. So that is the shape of osazone in case of glucose, lactose and maltose. Again I am repeating glucose will form a needle shaped or broom shaped crystals, lactose will form a touch me not plant and maltose will form a sunflower shaped crystals. Now we will see various viva questions. The first question is glucose, lactose, maltose forms which type of osazone? So glucose will form a needle shaped, lactose will form a touch me not plant and maltose will form a sunflower shaped crystal. Why glucose, fructose and mannose form same type of osazone? Because difference in the structure of glucose, fructose and mannose is in respect to the first two carbon and this difference is masked by phenylhydrazine. That's why glucose, fructose and mannose will form a same type of osazone that is needle or broom shaped crystal. Galactose forms broad thorn shaped type of osazone. 
कंपोजिशन ऑफ ओसाजोन बफर तो ओसाजोन बफर कंटेन सोडियम एसिटेट फिनाइल हाइड्रोजन हाइड्रोक्लोराइड एंड ग्लेसियल एसिटिक एसिड सो दैट इज रिगार्डिंग वाइवा क्वेश्चन नाउ वी विल सी डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ ओसाजोन टेस्ट so we have already seen the theoretical aspect of ozone test now we will see how to do ozone test in the laboratory so first you have to take 5 ml of carbohydrate solution in the test tube so take 5 ml of carbohydrate solution in the test tube then in the same test tube you have to add 3 ml of ozone buffer which contains phenyl hydrazine hydrochloride glycyl acetic acid and sodium acetate after adding 3 ml of ozone buffer you have to mix it properly then apply cotton wool on the top of the test tube so this is the way you have to apply cotton wool on the top of the test tube after applying cotton wool on the top of the test tube you have to keep the test tube in preheat preheated water bath for 20 to 25 minutes fine so you have to keep the test tube in the water bath for 20 to 25 minutes and after 25 minutes you have to examine the precipitate so now 25 minutes are over so we have to take the test tube out from the water bath as you can see there is a formation of ozone crystals in the test tube now we have to cool down this test tube under the running tap water and we have to prepare the slide from it so this is the way you have to cool down the test tube under the running tap water after cooling down you have to mount the crystals on the glass slide with the help of dropper so you have to take the crystals out from the test tube with the help of dropper and you have to mount it on the glass slide after that apply cover glass cover slip on it and then examine under the microscope so this is how you have to do the ozone test for the carbohydrates as we have discussed that glucose fructose and mannose will give needle shaped crystals lactose will form powder shaped crystals and maltose will form sunflower shaped crystals thank you for watching thank you